Hi there, and welcome to the Chaotic Classroom. This is the first of a series of videos on the scientific method. In this video, we are going to be looking at the variables. Now, the first thing that you need to know about variables is that there are three different types. We have independent, dependent, and controlled. So first, let's have a look at our independent variable. Now, there's three things that you need to know about an independent variable. First up, it is controlled by the investigator. So here I always want you to think of I, the investigator, am controlling the independent variable. Secondly, it's mostly mentioned first in the aim, the hypothesis, and conclusion. And number three, it is always on the x-axis when you draw a graph. Now when we look at the dependent variable, this is the one where you have to do something. That's why the first bullet there says you have to measure it or you have to observe it. It is also always mentioned second in the aim, the hypothesis and the conclusion and it's always on the y-axis. This means that independent is the cause and dependent is the effect. But now, remember, we're not going to ask you for the definition in the exam. We're going to ask you to identify them. So how do I know which one is which? Now, if we have a look at example number one, we are given the following information. It says, an investigation was done to determine if giving a plant more fertilizer will make it grow higher. So now you have to look at a sentence like this and you have to figure out, okay, which one did I control as the investigator? Can I control the amount of fertilizer? Can I control how high this plant grows? Because the thing that I, as the investigator, can control, that will be my independent variable. Now, I can control the amount of fertilizer that I'm going to give this plant. What am I going to do during this investigation? I'm going to measure how high this plant is going to grow, or the length of the plant. In example number two, we're giving the following information. It says, a hundred learners competed in a race. On average, the boys ran faster than the girls. Now again, independent. What did I, as the investigator control, what did I decide we are going to be measuring here? I decided to compare boys and girls. That means the gender of the athletes that will be my independent variable because how fast they are running or their speed, that will be the dependent variable. That is the thing I had to do. I had to measure how fast they were going. Now, in example number three, they're giving us a graph. And graphs are only sneaky the first time that you actually deal with them. After that, they are easy peasy because now we're not going to look at which one did I control, which one did I measure. Now we're just going to look at what is on the x-axis and what is on the y-axis. And independent goes on the x-axis, which means time is the independent, and that will make the speed the dependent variable. Now, just like graphs, tables are also only tricky the first time that you do them. So here's your tip. You know your ABCs? Now, x is before y in the alphabet which means X is always first and Y is always second. That means that our independent variable in this case will be light intensity and dependent will be water loss. So the stuff that's on the left hand side will be independent. The stuff's on the right hand side will be dependent. So that sorts out dependent and independent. But at the beginning of the video, we said that there's actually three types of variables. So what about those controlled variables? Now, when it comes to controlled variables, you need to ask yourself, what are the things that I need to keep the same to make sure that this experiment is fair? Now, sometimes in the example, they will give you clues. Sometimes you're going to have to use a little brain power. So first up, let's have a look at one of our examples, which we've already done. Example number two. We were told that a hundred learners competed in a race. And on average, the boys ran faster than the girls. Now remember we said 
that the fact that we have two different genders, we've got boys and we've got girls, we decided to compare them, that will be our independent variable. And our dependent was the speed. So those two things are going to change. So that cannot be a controlled variable. What do we need to keep the same to make sure that this race is as fair as possible? Now there's a whole list of things that we can actually add here. And remember, variables are going to have to do with validity. So sometimes they ask, what needs to be kept the same to make this experiment valid? Because in high school, we do not use the word fair, we use the word valid. And things like the ages of the learners, obviously we're not gonna compare a three-year-old with a 16-year-old, how far they were running, the time of day. And these are just three examples. I'm pretty sure that if you sit down and you think for 30 seconds, you'll come up with a whole list more. And like I said, these are variables, things that can normally change, but in this case, they shouldn't. And they are for validity. So variables for validity. I hope this helps. Thank you for visiting the Chaotic Classroom. See you next time.